Hi friends, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to present to you a case of PC rent during IOL insertion. So every surgeon has complications. It is our failures that teach us more than our successes. And in case of cataract surgery, PC rent is one of the most common complications that we encounter. Today I'm going to share a case in which a PC rent occurred during IOL insertion. So the intended size of the capsule rexis is about 5 mm and I'm going to do this case with the Ertley Catarex Faker machine. I'm using 450 mm of mercury vacuum and 45 cc per minute flow rate, 60% FACO power at 100 cm bottle height. I'm proceeding with the direct chop technique as in a mature cataract the direct chop technique is pretty effective in nucleofractus. Once the nucleus is fragmented into multiple pieces, FACO emulsification proceeds routinely. Very few cortical fibers are seen adhering to the capsule and these are easily removed by irrigation aspiration. In this case, it was planned that we will implant a three-piece hydrophobic acrylic IOL. This IOL is implanted through a 3 mm incision size. So here we are implanting the 3 piece IOL in a routine fashion and as you will see that the leading haptic fails to go into the bag. With my blunt instrument I then try and manipulate the leading haptic into the bag and I believe that it had gone inside and then I pushed the optic into the bag. That's when I realized the lens wasn't centering as well as I wanted it to and I noticed a dark black line behind the optic on the nasal side. Let's try and see that again in slow motion. So I'm pushing the IOL optic into the bag and I had a sudden jerky movement wherein I pushed it too much into the bag. At that point, I believe I punctured the posterior capsule with my leading haptic. This is the point where a surgeon has to be calm and composed and think of alternative strategies and not panic. So the first thing I decided was I'm going to look and see for a, if there is a zonular dialysis towards the same side as that PC rent. I checked and I confirmed and I believed that there was no zonular dialysis, so I planned to manipulate the IL optic into the circus. So I injected viscoelastic behind the IL optic, ensuring that the vitreous doesn't prolapse forward. At this point, I believe that I've had no vitreous prolapse because the rent is towards the nasal side and the entire nasal side is covered by the IL optic. So I just make sure that the vitreous body doesn't prolapse forward before I do any manipulation. I'm not too good with my left hand so I decide to enlarge the incision to about 5 mm so that I can manipulate the optic with my right hand. I'm using a micro IOL forceps and I've pulled the optic out of the bag and I've tried to rotate it and place it in the sulcus. 
At this point, I take a few minutes and I am watchful for the stability of the IOL. If it's still centered as I see it now, I believe that the IOL is in the ciliary sulcus. I confirm this with a Sinsky hook. I am hooking the, IOL, the edge of the IOL optic and checking whether it's actually out of the bag and into the sulcus. And when I believe that it is so, I try and dial this IOL in a horizontal position. So I'm satisfied now that the IOL is in the CDD circus and I will now proceed with the suturing of the main bone. In introspection, I believe I have made a few mistakes during the surgery. The first mistake I believe was that I made a small capsular excess. It, it wasn't adequately sized. The second mistake I made was I was very hasty in my decision to push the optic into the capsular bag. I should have confirmed the position of the leading haptic and I pushed the optic too hard, maybe a little gentle nudge or softer hands would have not resulted in a posterior capsular breach. Two weeks later, I removed the interrupted sutures that I had placed in the wound of this. And at four weeks, this patient had a best correct vision of 20-30. We looked very carefully for any vitreous tags in the anterior chamber and the pupil is adequately round and we could not detect any vitreous tags in the anterior chamber. So we decided to dilate the patient and have a look. So the IOL is very well placed in the sulcus. The red arrows indicate the large PC rent and the black arrows indicate the anterior capsular excess margin. So the continuous curvy linear capsule rexis was the savior of the day. Thanks for watching dear friends. If you have any questions, I'll take them in the comment section below.